so why are we here? We're here because there's a, there's a talent gap in our industry. And I believe that everyone in this room has agreed to, to cooperate um, together on how can we solve that talent gap and how can we uh, actually push forward um, these initiatives. So I think it was probably about a year ago, maybe, maybe a year and a half ago, that Facilitate um, wanted to start the conversations around how can we um, address the, um, the, the shortage of women in senior roles within um, cell, gene, and, and advanced therapies. Um, so we're not scientists, we're event organizers, but we do start conversations and we um, got together with um, Stacy Johnson at CCRM, um, Susan Nichols at Invertech, and, and Claudia Zilberberg at Akron as well. Um, you know, we started a conversation around, well, who are the inspiring women in, in our industry? And um, you know, can we actually um, you know, amplify what they've done and, and potentially inspire um, the next wave of, uh, of, of uh, senior executives and, and uh, scientists within our sector? So that's how it began. It started a conversation. And um, it's obviously brought us here. Uh, and I would now like to actually hand over to Susan that can tell you a little bit more about um, the, the women program and, and what we're looking at doing to move forward. Thank you. So first, thank you all for coming because I know it's, it's crazy for everyone today. So I appreciate your time. And I really appreciate Michael. He has done a lot of work to help support us and put us together and bring us into this room today. So thank you very much for that. I'm Susan Nichols. I'm VP of Business Development for Invitech. Um, relevant to what we're talking about today, I'm also past chair of Women in Bio in Raleigh-Durham area. Um, after I finished as chair, we realized that we had a gap in our chapter and that we lost all our senior leadership as we rolled off the chair positions. So I formed a board of advisors so that we retain that knowledge and the C-level women in Raleigh-Durham now act as advisors and it's really helped our chapter grow. Um, I recently rolled off as a chair of that board to start this initiative. There's been a lot of conversations, <clears throat> oh golly, over probably the past year and a half um, behind the scenes. You know, do we fit in with women in bio? Do we fit in with HBA? Um, how can we serve our community? And when I went out and I really started asking people what came to the top was really mentorship. That the number one thing everyone wanted was to know, how do I get to a C level? Claudia and I have had a lot of conversations about how do you get to board positions? That's where I am. I went on a board, how do I do that? So I call Claudia. I have a really good network and I'd like to create a forum with the community so that everyone can build a good network and so that we can all leverage our skills and as, as we attract women into the industry, we make sure we, we retain them. And we also want to pull them out of other industries because right now our industry is growing at a rapid pace and there's not enough people in it. So we're going to have to pull from academic institutions and pharma and this will create a form so as they come into the community, we can support them. So the name of the organization is Women, Women Offering Mentoring, Education and Networking which were the top three things that I heard from the community that they would like to see. So as Michael was talking about, we have a skill gap across all the levels, right up to senior level and C level. In our industry, it's interesting to me because I look around. I just came from JP Morgan and, and the, yeah, I see you're laughing, but we, we gather together, we huddle together when we see one another because there aren't a lot of us. And it's, we, we laugh and, and we also understand that um, 
as we move forward in our careers, we want to help the younger women along also so that maybe 20 years from now we look around J.P. Morgan and it's 50-50. That's my wish. That's my wish. Um, so as we struggle to recruit and retain and develop as well as promote women, um, what I'm really interested in hearing is as we build this organization, um, Daria Dallas and I have put our heads together, named it, put a website together, and set out the, the structure. So today I'm hoping that we can talk to women who are interested in being mentors, being mentored, and helping in, in some kind of board position with the build of the organization. So we're really seeking balance in, in our talent pool and support. So we want to create an environment that supports skill development, accelerates the number of women available to fill these positions, board positions, C-level positions, um, and, and really every level. And we'll launch with a proven structured mentorship program. Um, let me go off the slide. I'm not good at that. Um, so what we found out, I, I've been involved in three or four women's organizations and we built mentoring programs. And our industry doesn't fit those models because we're not centrally located. Uh, we are a very tight-knit community. We tend not to go outside our community to the HBAs and the women in bio. I, trust me, I've tried to recruit. Um, so I was looking for a structure that fits us. We're global and we're small. So as we grow, we have to have a vehicle that serves everyone. So what we put in place is best practice for a virtual mentoring program. Women are busy. We are all busy. We have family, we have other obligations, we have big careers. So it's a lot easier to request an hour of time than it is to request somebody be somewhere at a specific time. So that's the model on which it's built. So Daria, I task her with looking into a website, which turned into her building a website. And Daria and I had early conversations about mentoring and mentorship. And we decided that we would be the example. Thank you. Still no better. OK, so, so what we decided is um, I've been involved in the build of, of a few women's organizations. I've been on the board of women's organizations. And it's a skill set Daria would like to have. So um, I'm mentoring Daria to take over the leadership position and to help with the build so that we're, we're living by example. Um, by Q2, we will have applications in for mentors and mentees. Right now, I have 25 committed mentors and about 15 committed mentees. So we're off to a good start. On the website, as I said, there's an application for mentors and mentees. It's the way we're going to go about matching this first round. I could envision that we will do this in Q2 and we will open it up again in Q4. So we will run one year terms and we'll do it twice a year. Can you apply as both? Yes. Perfect. Please. Um, also, um, I'll, I'll go into that in a little more detail. Um, networking. I've talked to EBD. Facilitate has been kind enough to, to offer us a forum. Um, ARM has been kind enough to offer us um, you know, some space, some type of arrangement to meet. So um, we will have opportunities at the conferences to get together as a group. And that will be the networking portion. Education, we can do webinars. Interestingly enough, I have had several people approach me and ask if they could partner with us. So I don't know what that looks like today, but it certainly is interesting, right? So there are other organizations out there that want to reach us, and there's an opportunity to tap into their educational offerings. So the mentoring model that, that I envision is that 
the senior women apply as mentors and they have mentees. But, but to your point, it can go the other way. I'll change the slide, thank you. Um, because even if you mentor someone at a different skill level, it doesn't mean you don't need to be mentored. And then the, the junior women that are being mentored will in turn mentor someone, maybe you'll, you'll mentor a postdoc or someone in academia. So I have a lot of friends in academia and they are really struggling to help fill in that gap. We get, the, we get them in STEM. Our STEM initiatives are solid. Women in Bio has one of the best STEM initiatives ever. And we, we stop when they graduate. And then they go in the college. And the colleges are telling us that they just kind of get lost in there. So if we want to pull that talent into the industry, we can also give back and build a structure where we can do the one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So as you're being mentored, you have the opportunity to be a mentee. As you're being mentored, you can mentor someone else. So that gives you an increase in skill sets twofold. So as I said, an hour a month commitment, um, ideally, you know, it doesn't always happen. But if you can get 10 out of 12 months, we're all doing really well. Um, everybody agrees to a one-year term, and we'll do the application. Mentees will also agree to a one-year term, complete the application, and agree to a schedule. So applications submitted by March 15th, the first matching will be complete by April 15th, and then we'll have a kickoff call somewhere around April 20th. And on that kickoff call, we'll go through um, just some basics about mentor-mentee relationships, and some best practices to help you start your relationship. And um, first year, I'm really big on a review process, so we'll reach out to all of the matches and in the first six months and just see if there's anything we need to change. Then at the end of 12 months, we'll do another evaluation. <clears throat> also, I never seem to lose my mentees. So don't think because the year ends, the relationship ends. Many of these relationships are lifetime relationships. And you may want to be mentored by someone else, and you may want to become a mentor at that point. So, so year one, our goal is to not have dues. Uh, we're going to run pretty lean. And we're going to count on the generosity of others. Um, and you'd all be surprised by the support we'll get. So uh, you get access to women in the industry at all levels, some of the influential women that maybe you wouldn't want to approach because you don't feel comfortable. Um, networking, networking and relationship building. It's, it's how we find jobs, it's how we keep jobs, it's how we find resources because Half of you in this room I have called for something over the past year. Targeted community service involvement, it's, it's a way to give back in your community in which we're all building. Professional development, I strongly encourage anyone that's looking for, for future leadership to consider a board position. It's a really good way to start. Um, you will be mentored. We will help you with everything, how to do it, and then as one chair rolls off and another rolls on, um, the, the learning is passed down. We'll put into, for, for, because we are who we are, we will put in processes on how to run events, how, how to run the mentorship program so that the organization easily rolls over from one leadership person to another volunteer opportunities, committee members, board members. Individual membership, like I said, uh, free the first year. So in this suggested structure, I'll take chair for the build with, with the thought that Daria will take over when she's ready. 
No, she's doing great. Uh, we will start with a board of supporters because my past learning shows that having the support of, of the sea level women is, is critical because they hear different things than we do, they see different things, they, they are really good at matching us with the opportunities for partnerships. Um, mentorship program, we need someone to, to head that. Um, STEM outreach, we're not gonna start with that. STEM outreach will be a little later, but as we pull uh, women to be mentored from academia, it's also an opportunity for us to do a STEM initiative at that university. We do it at UNC, we do it at Duke, and they love it because the postdocs will get together and they'll have a project and they'll pick a school in the community and bring young women in and show them what science is. And it, it's a fabulous day for everyone. Programs, uh, we'll need someone to coordinate with the EBD, the arms, the facilitate to help put together a networking event, shoot the emails out so that everyone's informed. Um, finance, I have high hopes that at some point in time we will get sponsors. Uh, we are also a really good recruitment tool for them because we, we know the women we know who's coming in from academia. We can help partner for internship opportunities. And communications, a chair of communications to help us keep everyone informed, to, to blog for us, to tweet for us, to let the, the world know that we're here and here's what we're offering. So the call to action, um, we have one of the poking uh, things <laughs> um, that we'd like everybody to check in so that we have everybody's contact information. Um, the website is live. Yay! I'm telling you, I am so proud of her. I don't think I could have done that. I do not think I could have done that. So we're looking for members, sign up for for the membership notifications, we're looking for people who want to fill a board position, applications for mentors and mentees, and at any point in time, please reach out to Daria or myself. We take any and all ideas and suggestions. The, the idea in, in my mind was just to kick it off. We'll, we'll name it, we'll kick it off, we'll start it with the virtual mentoring, and it's up to the rest of you to decide what else it looks like. 